All right, so in this video, what I wanna do is focus a little bit more on uh, resource providers because it's very important to understand about registering uh, and, or unregistering resource providers to get access to particular services. Right now, I am still utilizing the free tier. So in some videos, I might be on free tier and other ones I might not be. But what I wanna do is make our way over to our subscription. So we'll go ahead and type in subscription in the top. And from here, we'll go into Azure subscription one. Yours might be named differently if you named it differently. I'm gonna go down uh, down over here and look for resource providers. And so in here, we have a bunch of uh, providers that we can utilize. And if we scroll through here, there's a ton of them. And so if we do not have um, a particular things registered, we're just not gonna be able to use those services. And this is the type of subscription you have might determine what you're able to actually access. So uh, we can just kind of sort here on the right-hand side by uh, just double clicking and we can see what resources we have. So I'm just looking through here and we, we kind of have an idea of what they are. So Microsoft Storage is probably storage accounts. Um, I'm trying to look for uh, virtual machines. I imagine there is probably one called Microsoft Virtual Machines or VM. If we're not sure, I can go ahead and type it up here. So I have VMware, what if I type in virtual machines? So um, some of these are not registered, but um, you know, uh, it's just gonna be really dependent on what we're running into. Some of these are grouped under the same thing, so it could be a bit misleading in terms of what their names are. But uh, what I'm gonna do is just take a look and click into storage and see what kind of information we can get about it. So we'll go ahead and click into this one here. And I'm, again, I'm just trying to see what kind of information we can get. And if we click here in the top, it's showing resource types. So that's kind of showing the kind of operations um, that we can uh, perform. And if I hover over them, notice it says like locations or operations or storage tasks. So I imagine that these, um, uh, these might be specifically tied to uh, API calls. Um, but yeah, if, if it's not very clear what these do, that's totally understandable. Uh, but I'm just gonna say that we are gonna come across resources and they're not gonna work. And it's, we're gonna have to enable those uh, resource providers first. Uh, one that I think that might happen would might be Cosmo DB. I kind of remember having to always activate that one. Cosmo DB. <laughs> so just give me a second, I'll go look for it, okay? All right, so I did a bit of Googling and in this one, they were suggesting some uh, resource providers. I think it's talking about Cosmos DB and I think that Cosmos DB used to be called Document DB or it was an older version of it. So I'm just curious if we were to uh, type that in here, let me say Document DB. Yeah, and notice that it's not registered. So um, Cosmos DB is a, um, it's a NoSQL uh, database. If you ever heard of um, uh, AWS's equivalent of DynamoDB, it's something similar. Uh, the question is, can we use this in the free uh, tier? I'm not 100% certain, but it says try for free uh, for up to 30 days. And so all I wanna see is, is it gonna complain that we don't have it registered? That's what I'm hoping uh, to happen here to demonstrate this, uh, this thing about registering. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead uh, here and hit create. And uh, we have a bunch of different options here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a NoSQL database. And I'm gonna create a resource group. So I'm gonna say, you know, my DB. We'll go ahead and say, okay. Just follow along. If you don't know the stuff, that's totally all right. Again, I'm just trying to get it to prompt. If you don't wanna make this, you can just watch and just see what happens uh, when we see that resource provider uh, complaint, assuming that this is gonna trigger it, I'm not sure. And so we need account names. So I'm gonna say my new DB. Um, and I'm just gonna put a bunch of numbers here on the end. These are global names, so it's treated like a domain name. I have to really figure it out. Apply the free tier discount, absolutely, yes. And we'll go ahead and give it a moment. So we'll just wait and we'll go ahead and create. And so it's initializing the deployment. And I'm not seeing any complaint uh, so far. I keep expecting it to say, hey, you need a, you need a, um, a resource provider here. But it seems to be deploying, so this might not be a good example, but I definitely remember uh, having this issue before, but we'll give it a moment. I'm just gonna be back in just a second and we'll see what the result is, okay? Also, while we're waiting, I just wanna point out that uh, a lot of times when things are happening, you can go up to the notifications and it will give you an update here. And so while this is creating, I could go ahead and give this a hard refresh um, and just still notice that it's still showing the deployment in progress. So we can really keep track of where we are or what's happening. Um, again, I don't know how long this takes to create. This might take quite a while. I just kind of forget. 
I know it's not going to cost me anything to spin this up, but uh, we'll wait here a bit, okay? All right, so that did actually create, so I guess that wasn't a really good example, unfortunately. Uh, but I do know, um, I'm going to go ahead to that resource group, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. Uh, anytime you launch a resource in Azure, uh, you always have to launch it into a resource group. And it's a lot easier to tear down all the resources within a resource group. So I go ahead and hit delete resource group. It has that one uh, database there. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So I did kind of cheat and I went out to the internet and I said, what service uh, isn't enabled by default uh, where you'd have to register it? And one they said was AKS. AKS is uh, for running Kubernetes clusters. That's a little bit um, out of scope for uh, the, the, uh, this level of certification. But I'm going to do it anyway. I really don't want you to do this. I just want you to uh, watch and see what I'm talking about here because Kubernetes can be very expensive. Um, and I don't want to, to put you in trouble here or to make this harder for you. So just watch along and let's see if we can see what happens when we try to launch a Kubernetes service without turning on uh, turning it on in uh, the uh, under resource providers. So I'm gonna go here and launch a new Kubernetes cluster. And I'm gonna create a new resource group. I'm gonna just say my K8 um, uh, resource group for RG there. We'll say okay. And I'm gonna choose something. Again, don't do this. I'm just doing this. We'll go ahead and do dev and test. I'm gonna say my uh, K8's cluster. And so it likes the name there, that's fine. I'm gonna go with the free pricing tier. If it's free, you can do it as well, but I'm gonna tell you it's not fun to set up Kubernetes clusters. It's going to set up uh, one node pool. We'll go ahead and hit review and create. If you're also noticing, um, there's always this confirmation step with um, Azure. I really like this, like AWS does not do this. GCP kind of does this, but you always go through this process of go through the steps, review what it is that you want and hit create, and then it has a, a deployment step. Um, so it's a nice workflow. I really like that about Azure. But we'll give it a moment here to um, get ready to confirm all the information and we'll go ahead and see if we can create it. It says validation is passed. We'll go down below and hit create. I'm still expecting it to ask me about container service. And I definitely confirmed that this is something you're supposed to have turned on. Now, what we'll do while we're waiting is I'm gonna go over here, uh, click back into a new tab. And while that is deploying, cause that's gonna take a while, I'm gonna go ahead back into our subscriptions and I want to check resource providers, cause I know this one is called like container services. So I'm gonna type in here container and it says it's registered. So I feel like Azure's messing with me because in the past you've always, always, always had to manually turn these on. And I feel like it's just turning them on for me. So what I'm gonna do here <laughs> is I want to see something I don't have turned on and then I want to go try and use it and see if it actually just turns it on. Because if it does that now, that is great. But always in the past, that's not how it worked. So just let me go look for something and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so I just went over to ChatGPT and I asked, what does Microsoft Compute give you access to? And it says virtual machines and scale sets, which makes sense. That's what I recall uh, it doing, but I just wanted to be 100% sure it's going to do what I wanted to do. I also noticed that uh, coming back to AKS, our deployment failed. I'm gonna go take a look here. Um, the resource write operation failed to complete successfully because it reached terminal provisioning state failed. That's totally fine. I don't even wanna deploy a <laughs> Kubernetes cluster anymore. I've given up on that. We're gonna go ahead and just um, delete this resource group. And if you're thinking this is a bit messy, I'm just gonna tell you, this is what Azure's like. Um, Azure is uh, really great in terms of its offerings, but uh, out of all the cloud service providers, I would just say that it is the most uh, challenging to uh, learn. But anyway, that's gonna tear down. And so what I wanna find out is if I go launch a virtual machine, is this automatically gonna turn on to be registered? That's what I wanna know. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and attempt to launch a virtual machine, which that is something that is a lot more reasonable to learn at this uh, certification level. But we're gonna go ahead and hit create. I'm gonna choose an Azure virtual machine. And I'm gonna create a new resource group. I'm gonna say my uh, uh, virtual machine uh, RG. And I'm gonna go here and just say my virtual machine RG. Or not RG, but just put that in there like that. And we're gonna go ahead and choose US East. Does not really matter. I just wanna launch it somewhere. 
And I mean, this looks all okay. Um, I'm not gonna log into this. The only thing that matters is uh, what kind of image we're utilizing, because that's going to determine uh, the spend. So that is free tier. I'm gonna stick with free tier. Let's go ahead uh, forward to our review and create and see what happens. So again, I'm kind of expecting to create this and I wanted to say that it's not enabled. It wants us to generate a new key pair. Um, I don't really want to download a key pair, but I'll go ahead and do that anyway. That's something you commonly do with virtual machines. I just wanted to create it. So again, I have not enabled that service. While we're waiting for this, let's go ahead and click on notifications and view all the activity. I'm just curious if it's enabling those subscriptions because Usually it tells us everything in here. And so I'm just carefully looking. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. That was four minutes ago. Ah, look here, register subscription for container service. Okay, so um, we absolutely do need to turn it on, but it turned it on automatically for us. And I'm just trying to say that in the past, I always had to manually do that. Down below here, register the, the uh, re, uh, storage resource provider. So I'm not sure if this is a problem anymore, but I still think it's important to point out that you are supposed to register services uh, before you use them. Um, and that's the only point I wanted to make there. Um, so just understand that that is something that's important to um, uh, Azure. But uh, now what I need to do is uh, get rid of my... Um, uh, that virtual machine I've been launching. So over here, you can see the latest resources. I'm gonna go to this one here, and I know it's still deploying, it's creating all these resources. I'm gonna go ahead and tear that down. So I'll go here and just say, um, apply for silly for all, everything. Yep, I definitely wanna do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this name here, and we'll tear that down. So that's the only point I wanted to make in that video. I know it was super complicated, but hey, that's Azure. We'll see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.